welcome to First Christian Church. We're delighted that you have taken this time to join us in a little different fashion than what we're accustomed to. We hope that you will take pour your heart and your soul and your spirit into your experience, even though you're at your home or in front of your computer or wherever you are. We pray that God's spirit will be upon you and that you will connect with God as we worship God together virtually instead of in person this week. I would invite you to open your heart and your mind as we join in prayer and invite God to be with us. Let us pray. Our most wonderful God, we gather in a unique way today. You have said you would always be with us where two or more are gathered. And so on this day, as we gather, be with us. Pour out your spirit upon us. Sense where we are in the anxiousness of the world and the pandemic that is around us. Allow us to feel the comfort of resting in your spirit. Let the music and the word open our hearts. And let our minds be at peace as we encounter you in your fullness. Use those of us who are here for worship as vessels. That we too might be connected with those who are joining us in worship. And fill us all with your spirit. And let us know that, and be reassured that we are loved by you. And by your son, our Savior, in whose name we pray. The mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Tell me how could this be? And I'm doing my best to rise above it all. But the water's getting deeper, and the hills are getting steeper, and I'm starting to feel my faith begin to fall. You said trust me and keep me Even if I seem so far away For I love you and I'm with you So Lord I'm trusting in the promises you Turn in your Bibles, please, to the 23rd Psalm, a familiar psalm for all of us. 
but a psalm that is appropriate to the day and what is going on in this world today. Hear these words from David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Ever equipping God as I speak, may you increase and I decrease. May the words you have given me for this message be seized that rest in our hearts, that we might bear fruit for you here on earth. May I speak boldly and courageously that which you've given me to speak. And may we as your people have ears that hear. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. From a shepherd to a king. And yet we find one of the most rich ancient writings before us today as we the people of God face something we've never faced before. We come together from our homes. We come together relaxed, comfortable where our children play and where we reside every day. We're not in church. But yet we are being church. And God has called us to this moment to remember to be grounded in who it is God has made us to be. And he brings us to the heart of David's writings. He brings us to a psalm we read more times at the end of life than we read at the beginning of life. And David states the whole purpose of the psalm in the first sentence. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. Now how many of us, if we think about our lives, we think about what we want. We wake up in the morning, and I know a lot of us right now, we want things to go back to normal. We want people to be healthy. We want the pandemic to end. But yet, then we'll still want. Because we'll move from wanting that to we'll want a new car. And then we'll get the new car and we'll want a new house. Or we'll get the new house and we'll want a new city. And the next thing you know, our want list just continues to add up. And David calls us back into reality by saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why do we want? Why do we really want if we're people of God? If we are people who believe in God, if we're people who believe that Jesus is the Christ, if we believe that God created us and, and God formed us, why do we want? Because we don't trust. We don't trust enough in the God to provide for us, to lead us through whatever we're going through. We want to be in control. And we want to put away the hurts of our lives by covering things up, by buying things, by, by making our life feel better. Because who doesn't feel good when you drive a new car? Who doesn't feel good when you get a new set of clothes? Who doesn't feel good when you meet the love of your life? And somewhere we put Jesus on the back burner and we give in to our wants and we forget that the Lord is our shepherd. But let's understand when David says the Lord is our shepherd, he's speaking from experience, from a life experience of, of being a shepherd. David knows what it means to have wandering sheep. David knows what it means that if, if you take your eyes off the sheep, the evil can reach up. And get them. The wolf can sneak in. Or the snake can sneak in. Or the scorpion can sneak in. And destroy your flock. 
Be it known that in ancient times when the shepherd would prepare the pasture for the sheep, he would go in first. And he would clear out those things which endangered his flock. He would remove the snakes. He would remove the scorpions. And he would make sure there were no wolves within the territory. Because he was protecting his flock. And so he says to us, the Lord is my shepherd. God is overwatching everything he does. Everything we do. We still have no wants because God will take care of us. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. Lush green pastures. Wonderful places to let rest. Wonderful places to be comfortable Places that will fill our every need of hunger. Our God takes us to those places. Our God will make sure that every hunger within us is met if it's of a righteous hunger. Our God will sustain us. He leads me beside, who doesn't like still waters? Being a fly fisherman, there's nothing more than I love to come upon still water. Because I know from the rough to the still, if you'll find that transition in the still, most of the time, there'll be a fish. There'll be substance in the still water. And we, the people of God, we've got to remember that our God meets us everywhere we go. Our God provides for us, gives us that, that lush green grass. That intimate substance of the still water, the, the fresh, cool water that sustains our body. Our God knows us, our God believes in us, and our God gives to us because our God loves us. One of my favorite parts of this text is how David writes the text. Not only does He call us into accountability, but He draws us into relationship. You see, when He begins, He writes in third person. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me beside, into green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. But then he talks about a journey that we all go on and he draws us into an in, intimate occasion in our lives that we cannot get away from. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, David, being a person who he is, being a, a rich, righteous person that he is, he understands his earthly death is imminent. He understands that he, a person created by God, will soon not live upon the earth. And one thing we as people of God do is we fear the death experience. We've got to get everything packed into our lives. We've got to get all of our wants met and everything bought and everything done like we want it to be. We have to achieve all of our goals. We have to attain all of our positions. We have to save all of our money. We have to make sure everything is right in our life. And we want to cling to every day because we're afraid to die. And the reason we're afraid to die is because we don't know. The fear and the anxiety from the pandemic that we're experiencing right now, the, the conversations that are going on not only on social media, but with friends, between friends, when we can get close enough, we can talk. It's all about the pandemic, and it's about the fear of death. The death of the economy. The death of relationship. The death of what we have and what we've built up in the world. And maybe even possibly our own physical death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And right there, David throws us a line, and we as the people of God must grab the line and hang on to the book because he says, you are with me. He doesn't say he is with me. He doesn't say the Lord is with me. He says you, and he moves from a third person perspective to an intimate second person perspective with God. And all of a sudden, David and God are joined in partnership. You are with me. 
When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when my hardest days are here, when my final days are here, I will fear no evil. I will not fear. Don't fear. Because God is, wants to be intimate with you. David invites us into intimacy and says, come and be intimate with God in these moments. If you are allowing God to be shepherd of your life, then you allow God to be intimate with you. The shepherd of the sheep. He knew their every move. He knew their every want. He knew their every need. Thy rod and thy staff They comfort me. God is so intimate with us that we're willing to allow God into our lives to where He has to occasionally use His staff to, to draw us back in or His rod to correct us a little bit to keep us in the fold of the flock. The hysteria that we allow in our life, not just during pandemic times, but during ordinary times. We have people all over the world taking medicine. Because they're anxious. We have people all over the world who, are, who can't have a relationship because they're too anxious. They can't commit to loving one another because they're too anxious. They're, they're too scared. They've run from the flock is what's happened. And God is trying to bring us back in and say, hey, wait a minute. Be intimate with me. Come and let us have a relationship. Trust that the shepherd knows what is good for the sheep. Oh, if I did that, I would have to admit that I'm a sheep and that I'm not in control. Look around. If ever there was a day in this world that says to us, we are not in control. What we're living through right now speaks to us in volume. People are controlling where we go. People are controlling what we can buy. People are controlling everything in our life. And we, the people of God, trying to take care of one another, are obeying those controls. Because we are afraid of what can happen to our world. And out of respect for one another, out of love for one another, we don't want to spread a disease, so we obey the controls. And it's good for our obedience, but yet we can't give up our faith. What we have to believe while we obey the controls is that God is in control. And God knows what's going on in our lives, whether we be in pandemic time or whether we be in ordinary time. God knows. God, God wants to be intimate with us. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You, you anoint my head with oil. Do you know what that means? The anointing of oil was a practice that was used on sheep to help doctor the sheep to wellness. We've practiced it even many times in our Christian faith. We anoint people with oil so that we can pray over them and we can help them be on their road to wellness. They anointed, the shepherd anoints the sheep with oil. So that things that, that are against it, like uh, uh, internal parasites and things like that, cannot get to it. And the shepherd takes care of the sheep. Just like God takes care of us, God anoints us and calls us His own and, and anoints our head with oil. And David has perspective enough to look around. How many of us have ever sat in a chair and looked around at what we had and said, I have enough? If you have, you're the exception to the rule. Or possibly you're in your last days of your life. Because most people I talk to, they're trying to attain something. Look at the stock markets. Look at the jobs. Look at everything people want nowadays, what they're losing. If we allow God to be in control of our lives, if we allow God to be with us and to sustain us, to, to allow us to lay in green, lush grass, to walk beside still waters, to be comforted as we walk the valley of death, 
We have but one thing. An overflowing cup. Do you know what that means? For the Christian, it means there's no end. There's absolutely no end to the grace of God. There is no end to the love of God. We know there is an end to certain supplies around the world today. I don't know why toilet paper is so popular. But if we believe in God, if we're willing to, uh, willing to allow God to be the shepherd of our life, our cup overflows. It means God has enough for us. God is enough for us. God wants to be enough for us. The question is, are we willing to take this step from our third person description of God to a second person description of God to where we become intimate? David's cup overflowed because David was willing to offer his cup to God. What about us? Do we fill our own cups? Do we try to control our own lives? Do we pick what pasture we lie down in? Do we pick what well we drink from? Do we number our own days ourselves? Do we declare ourselves righteous? What about us? Where's your cup? What's filling your cup? Is it the goodness of God? Is it a grace that knows no bounds? Is it, is it a forgiveness of all sin for anything you've done? Are you allowing that kind of water to fill your cup? Are you offering that cup to the living water of Jesus Christ? That living water we talked about last week, that well that runs so deep, are you allowing your cup to overflow? Because if we move to that point where we can allow God to be shepherd, and we can humble ourselves to say, okay, we're sheep, and we need a shepherd, then God becomes so intimate with us that we have a cup. Which means we have a place at the table. Which means God is welcome to be with us. Which means God will fill our cup. And our cup will overflow. And if we allow the goodness of God to fill our cup and for it to overflow, surely goodness and mercy, not chaos, not fear. David knew what chaos and fear was. He had been there. He had faced Goliath. He had gone from shepherd to king. He knew the pressures of leading people. He had given in himself to his own image of who he should be. But yet he also understood that we serve a merciful God. That if we'll just allow God to be our shepherd and allow God to fill our cup up, that there's nothing but goodness. There's nothing but goodness in intimacy with God. Goodness and mercy. Some of us can't handle that. We've been raised in chaos. We've been called different names. We've been told we were bad all the time. And we emulate what was set before us by our parents or those who raised us. And God says we need to change that we're good. And that we can stay in the goodness. During one of the greatest struggles of my life, as I was trying to find myself amidst the chaos, a wise, wise friend of mine said to me, Barry, stay in the goodness. Stay in the goodness. Keep your cup held out 
so that that living water fills it up and it overflows. And you know what overflows is mercy. God gives mercy to us to allow us to be the sheep who nibble here and walk off over there and nibble here and walk off over there. And we nibble here and we walk off over there and somewhere the shepherd is in our life, but yet it's not central. But when we take and we grab the cup, and we allow God to pour water into our cup and it begins to overflow, then goodness starts to come out. And the sheep draw closer to the shepherd. The sheep stay closer to the shepherd. And when we begin to stay closer to the shepherd, we find goodness. And we find all of the things that David has listed. The green pastures, the still waters, the righteousness, the anointing of the oil, the healing, and the strength to walk through death. And the greatest thing is that we can slow down because the world's not persecuting us anymore. The world's not creating chaos in our life anymore and we don't have to live in fear. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. If we are central enough with God and we can sit at a table and not worry about the pressures of the world, then we know we've become intimate with God. But most of the time, we live a life that grabs fast food. And we worry about the pressures of life. And we forget to put our cup out there and allow God to fill that cup. But if we can sit at the table with our cup overflowing, and staying in the goodness that's poured out and receiving the mercy that God offers, then we can realize the intimacy of relationship. And we can realize the greatest thing that David says. We will dwell in God's presence forever. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I've never lived anywhere in my adult life more than five years. I've never stayed in one structure more than five years. In my 37 years of marriage, you can count numerous and numerous in the teens the number of structures or houses that I've lived in. But with God, we count one. We're intimate. The cup is offered. We take the cup. And we become intimate with God through our relationship with Jesus Christ. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord. Not today. Not tomorrow. Forever. Let us be the people of God. Let us allow our shepherd to be over us and let us hold out our cup and be at the table with God so that we too will dwell in his presence forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The sky shall
gathered together and the Spirit of God has been upon us whether we are in the sanctuary or we are in our homes. What we ask is that you this week behold him. Allow him to be your shepherd. Let us join together as brothers and sisters wherever we are, wherever you're experiencing this. Would you join me in prayer as we wrap up this beautiful day? Let us pray. O oh God, who is our shepherd? You, will, you know our needs, you know our desires. Move our spirit from fear to amazement to intimacy to where we can behold you. And allow us to go where we can in this world this week and to love you to be in love with you unconditionally so that we can love others as you have loved us. Be with all who are in trouble with their health, those who are struggling, lift their spirits. And most of all, God, move in a healing way to overcome this pandemic. Comfort us and let us walk with you into our days so that others may know your presence in our lives and may know that they too are loved by you. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.